Hello and welcome back to Global Value. Today we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Eastman Chemical Company, ticker symbol EMN. So we're looking at Eastman today as a subscriber request. Currently the business trades for $87.26 per share. Over the last year, their stock price is down nearly 26%. So this is underperforming the S&P 500 over this time frame. Over the last five years, Eastman Chemical is down 4% compounded annually. So their stock price is down 19% overall. Over 10 years, they're compounding their stock price at a rate of 2.5% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, Eastman Chemical is compounding their stock price at a rate of 6.5% annually over the past 18 years or so. The business does pay out dividends, and so their average dividend yield would be in addition to this compounded annual return. Right now, Eastman Chemical is paying out a 3.5% dividend yield, which is about double that of the yield that you'd be receiving from an S&P 500 ETF. So Eastman Chemical is currently $22 below their 52-week high. They're up $17 from their 52-week low. Just a very small amount of their shares outstanding are currently sold short, and Eastman Chemical has a $10.3 billion market cap. So for more background about the business, established in 1920 to produce chemicals for Eastman Kodak, Eastman Chemical has grown into a global specialty chemicals company with manufacturing sites around the world. The company generates the majority of its sales outside of the United States with a strong presence in Asian market. During the past several years, Eastman has sold non-core businesses choosing to focus on higher margin specialty product offerings. Eastman Chemical Company was founded in 1920 and is headquartered in Kingsport, Tennessee. So for our fundamental analysis, analysis today, we are performing the select six analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Eastman Chemical based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality quality of the business being about twice as good as average. Throughout this time frame, Eastman's chemicals return on capital has fluctuated somewhat. It has increased since the COVID-19 pandemic. However, when we average out their returns on capital, Eastman Chemical earns about 11% in a typical year here. While that is above the returns that a typical business is making, that's a few percentage points below that 14% benchmark we're ideally looking for. And so this is going to be an X to start things off here on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. So over this time frame, Eastman Chemical has very, very slightly grown their revenues, only increasing their revenues by 4%. Their earnings are down 27% at the same time. And most importantly here, their free cash flows are down 64%. When we look at the business's cash flow statement, we can see that this came from a number of different items. The biggest thing here was a large change in inventory. They also had other operating activities that were a loss, and Eastman Chemical increased their capital expenditures. All three of these contributed to lower free cash flow for the business. So because both their earnings and their free cash flows are down, this is an X here on metric number two. It may be a potential concern that their free cash flows are down. However, it's not been out of the norm that businesses have been changing their inventories in the past year and having those take hits to their free cash flows. However, this would be something to dig into and learn more about because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business and ultimately a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day discounted back by some reasonable interest rate is what that business is going to be worth. So a business can use its free cash flows to reinvest back in the company, make acquisitions, buy back shares, pay down debt, or pay dividends. Next up for metric number three, here we're looking at Eastman Chemical from the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years for the company. As we learned in our previous metric, their earnings are down over this time. However, earnings are just one part of this earnings per share equation. So we also want to look at what they've done in terms of their shares outstanding and potentially a good sign for long-term shareholders in the business. Eastman Chemical has bought back 13% 
of their shares outstanding over this time frame. So this is important because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a business buys back shares, they're decreasing the number that they have outstanding and they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which will ultimately increase the percentage of the business's profits that you're going to be entitled to. They're doing all this without you having to spend a dime. So it's almost like the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. And so just like with any other acquisition, we want the company to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. So when a company buys back their shares, that depends on what the gap is between their intrinsic value and the price that they're paying for those share buybacks and what the business's future prospects look like. That, of course, requires more research into the business. However, because their earnings are down and they bought back their shares, these two are going to be competing against each other in metric number three here. Unfortunately, their decline in earnings are outpacing their share buybacks, and so this is an X here on metric number three as well. Next up for metric number four, here we're looking for something very similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. Unfortunately, this is going to have the same result as our previous metric with their free cash flows down at a rate that's faster than their share buybacks. This is an X here on metric number four as their free cash flows per share have declined over this time frame. In their most recent fiscal year, Eastman Chemical only produced $2.84 worth of free cash flow for each share that they had outstanding. So far, things aren't looking so hot for Eastman Chemical. We're 0 for 4 through our first four metrics. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash their short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over their last five years. So Eastman Chemical has been reducing their net debt position throughout this time frame. Currently, the business has just under $4.9 billion worth of net debt. However, when we add up all of the business's free cash flows over this time frame, that only comes out to about $4.6 billion worth of free cash flow. So again, that's impacted by some of the changes that flowed through their cash flow statement in their most recent fiscal year. However, that's going to be slightly below this net debt position and and so this is going to be an X here on metric number five. The business earned very steady free cash flows in 2018 through 2021. However, again, it was their most recent fiscal year that really did the damage here for the company. And this is why this is going to be an X here on metric number five. Again, this is why it's important to take an averaged look at a company and see what their historical track record is truly like instead of just taking one really good or one really bad year and projecting that all the way out into the future. Again, though, we are 0 for 5 through our first five metrics for Eastman Chemical. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. So if this is the case, this may provide us a potential starting point for a reasonable valuation of Eastman Chemical, and it may offer us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury as well. So we're using their total enterprise value because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position, and it's going to give us a perspective of the business that's more similar to as if Eastman Chemical were a private company. So currently, Eastman Chemical has a $15 billion total enterprise value. And we learned in our previous metric that the company has produced $4.6 billion worth of free cash flow over their last five years, meaning that in an average year, Eastman Chemical produces about $920 million worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $920 million of their average free cash flow by their $15.3 billion total enterprise value, that is going to give us about a 6% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. So surprisingly, coming in all the way at the end here for Eastman. This is going to be our first and only check of the day on metric number six. So far, it hasn't been the case that we've seen many of these types of businesses. Keep in mind, though, that just because this is the case doesn't mean that you're going to run out and go buy this company. This type of analysis is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. This metric is just giving us a historical perspective of the business. You also want to be aware that, again, their free cash flows are down significantly in their most recent fiscal year. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Eastman Chemical, when we divide their 364 million million dollars of their last fiscal year's worth of free cash flow by their $15.3 billion total enterprise value. That only gives us about a 2.4% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. That would be on the other side of this 5% risk premium, and that would be below the yield of the 10-year treasury as well. So again, that's just something you want to be mindful of here. Keep in mind again that this is one of our six metrics, and these metrics are meant to be taken in holistically. While they are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. Even though this was our final metric, you'll want to stick around until the end of the video because we've still got some interesting things left to cover for the business. Then here as a bonus, we're taking a look at Eastman Chemicals dividend profile. Again, the business currently pays out a 3.5% dividend yield. 
which is more than double that of the dividend yield that's being paid out by an S&P 500 ETF right now. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends, so it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business like we've been doing here today and look to see whether a company's dividends are well supported by either their earnings or their free cash flows depending on the type of business. For Eastman Chemical, we want their dividends to be supported by their free cash flows, and that's been the case in four of these five years. The business was very comfortably able to support their free cash flows from fiscal 2018 until fiscal 2021. However, in their most recent year, the company ran into some trouble. So again, because of those combined factors that we previously went through, some of these may be one-time items for the business, and the company has increased their dividends in all five of these years. And in the previous four years, they did maintain a pretty reasonable and pretty healthy dividend payout ratio. So again, if you're potentially interested in Eastman Chemical, based off its abilities to return capital to shareholders, either through its dividends or through its share buybacks, you just want to dig in and understand where the company's free cash flows are likely to be at in the future in order to understand if this capacity will be safe and healthy going forward into the future as well. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Eastman Chemical, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for Eastman Chemical. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with an average of their free cash flows over their last three years to give us a potentially more normalized perspective of the business's free cash flows going forward. Then we're using historical growth assumptions dating back all the way till 1990 in order to project these free cash flows out into the future. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward to give us a baseline projected estimate for Eastman Chemical over the next 20 years. If we assume that the business can grow their average free cash flows at a rate of just under 6% annually for the next 10 years, and then during the 10 years out after that, that this growth rate would slow down to 4% annually, If we add in the company's tangible book value, which gives us a perspective of their tangible net worth, this will be slightly skewed based off the company's share buybacks, so this may actually be higher in reality than what we're adding in here. That's again something you would just want to dig in and a nuance to this model. Then if we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is ideally looking for from his investments, in addition to his margin of safety requirements, which depend on the dynamics of an industry and a business's competitive positioning within that industry, then it looks like from today's valuations of Eastman Chemical that a potential fair intrinsic value for the company is right around $57.5 per share. So about $10 below their 52 week lows. So it does look like the business would be trending toward being more overly valued than even fairly valued right now. However, there are some additional caveats that you'll want to keep in mind here. Number one, this 15% rate of return would be including their dividend yield. So we would not be doubly counting their dividends and 3.5% of this would be coming from this dividend yield. Additionally, these are based off these historical assumptions. So you really want to dig in here and learn more. A discounted cash flow model is really based off the predictability of a business's future free cash flows. And so it looks like Eastman Chemicals free cash flows may not have been as predictable as some other types of businesses in the past. However, there are reasons why that may stay the same or potentially change into the future. So please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. So in just a minute, we'll talk about our summary for Eastman Chemical, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business, especially those that support the key points for either a potential long or potential short thesis of the company? Starting off with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for the business. Number one, as Eastman continues to develop new patented products, it should expand its specialty chemicals business, which generates higher margin and commands some degree of pricing power. Number two, Eastman's investments in plants that use sustainable based feedstocks, including recycled chemicals and wood pulp, should benefit from growing demand for specialty plastics made from these feedstocks. And number three, Eastman is well positioned to meet evolving chemical demands in automotive with window inner layers and specialty plastics through its best-in-class patented products. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis for the business, number one, the majority of Eastman's products are not specialty chemicals, which leaves the company more exposed to the volatility of the cyclical commodity chemicals industry. Number two, as a middle cost player in many of its downstream chemicals, 
Eastman's profits are in danger of a narrowing oil to gas spread. And number three, while the company's coal gasification is a low cost method compared with many international competitors, other Eastman products are made with higher cost petrochemicals. So hopefully that offers a potentially balanced perspective around some of the key qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for our summary. So Eastman Chemical checks the box on one out of six of our metrics today, meaning that the company looks like it is very weak in terms of its attractiveness for further research. Although please don't let that discourage you if you are interested in the business. Eastman Chemical, while they earn above average returns on capital, had their returns fall a few percentage points below what we we're ideally looking for. They have grown their revenues just very marginally over the last five years, but their free cash flows and their earnings are down over this time frame. One potential bright spot is that the business did buy back 13% of their shares outstanding, so that may be a benefit for long-term shareholders in the company. Because their most recent fiscal year was so difficult in terms of their free cash flows, it didn't look like the business was able to support their net debt position. Although if those cash flows were able to rebound to where they were at historically, it looks like they likely would be able to. However, that wasn't the case currently. Our only check of the day came based off the company's average free cash flow to enterprise value yield, as it does look like that's offering a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. However, that didn't look like that was the case based off their most recent fiscal year's free cash flows. Looking at their dividend profile, it looks like Eastman was able to comfortably and easily support a growing dividend, and at least that was the case through four of these five years. Again, the business ran into some pretty significant trouble in their most recent fiscal year, and they were not able to support their dividend, even though they did grow their dividend throughout that time as well. One of the key considerations for Eastman is whether their recent free cash flow troubles are going to continue or not into the future. So that's something you would want to dig in and learn more about if you're potentially interested in the business. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Eastman Chemical. If you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions are accurate and applicable going forward for the business, and you are ideally seeking a 15% rate of return from the company, then it looks like at today's valuations of Eastman Chemical that a reasonable fair value for the business is right around $57 per share. Again, that would be $30 below their current stock price. And it looks like the last time the business was trading at those levels was in April of 2020. So again, there are reasons why this may not be potentially accurate for the business. So it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Eastman Chemical. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Eastman Chemical Company, ticker symbol EMN. Again, we looked at the business today as a subscriber request. And with Eastman checking the box on only one of our six metrics, it looks like the company's very weak in terms of its attractiveness for further research. Again, don't let that discourage you if you're potentially interested in the business. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Eastman Chemical with me and have a great day.